Japanese officials confirmed that radioactive materials have leaked into the atmosphere following a fire at reactor number four at the Fukushima power plant. The fire is said to have damaged an area used to store spent nuclear fuel. The situation at all six reactors is said to be critical after the only two remaining cooling systems failed following the devastating quake and tsunami. Well, the blast at the facility number two that occurred this morning has reportedly damaged the vessel of the reactor. It's stoking fears of a nuclear meltdown, which were already high since the reactor explosions began. The company that owns the plant has reportedly withdrawn over 700 workers, leaving only 50 to deal with the disaster. Engineers have been using seawater to cool the reactors in an attempt to avert a nuclear meltdown. RT's Ivanet reports from about uh, about 100 kilometers uh, from the station itself. The whole car completely seems is on edge because it seems like we could be on the verge of a, a nuclear catastrophe now. There have been two explosions at the Fukushima power plant today so far, and following that second one, there were really serious fears of a major radiation leak. Now, just uh, recently, the chief cabinet secretary for Japan has been speaking to the press very frequently, saying that the radiation levels around the plant have been dropping. But following that second uh, explosion, they did peak uh, at 400 times the maximum level uh, that one should be exposed to over the course of a whole year. Now, for widespread uh, radiation contamination for, and radiation sickness, uh, the levels that seem to, the, the really high for warning levels as well, as, as seem to be around 1 million, so around half that uh, now, but it does seem like the radiation levels are decreasing. However, uh, the number of foreign news crews that I've spoken to today and the number of expats and foreigners living here simply don't believe what the Japanese government is saying. The general wisdom is that uh, from those who live here and have been doing so for a number of years is that uh, what they're saying is it's, um, they don't really trust the information they receive. They've been, they've been reading through the line, reading between the lines, and from what the Prime Minister said in his public address to people, saying that stay indoors. That is a sort of veiled uh, advice to get away if you can. And, and the number of people leaving Japan is uh, increasing. The exodus seems to have begun, and all the foreign news crews that I've spoken to have uh, headed for the exit. Uh, I'm actually now a little bit further away from Fukushima. I've head, I'm heading towards uh, Niigata on the west coast uh, because I'm with a team from New Zealand who are heading for the airport. But all the flights south of the, uh, uh, to Tokyo and uh, Osaka are actually booked up the next two days. So they're on a, on a waiting list for two days. And it seems like uh, all the other airports are full of people trying to leave. Now on the streets of, of uh, Sendai this morning, you can see the, the concern because people were queuing up at uh, what shops were still, still had food left, ready to stop by because they fit the radiation clouds could soon spread to, their, to them. They're just 100 kilometers north of Fukushima. So they're ready to stay indoors for a long period of time if that radiation cloud does spread. Uh, I've been there recording. Now, uh, Dr. Robert Jenkins from the Hiroshima Peace Institute says, judging by how the situation is unfolding, it seems the government has little control it certainly appears that we're not getting the full story in the sense that every day we're told that the situation is under control and that efforts are succeeding in, uh, in reducing the risk, but yet every day we see the situation getting further and further out of control. Uh, each day we, we wake here in Japan to a much more grim situation than the day before. And it's, it's hard to imagine, I, I think that it's, it's hard to give accurate information. I think it's hard for the government to get accurate information. But I think that there's a growing distress among people in Japan that the information that we're receiving is not informing us to the extent that we would like it to. And it, that doesn't reduce panic. It just makes people all the more uncertain when they believe they can't trust fully the information they're being given. The situation is, is uh, very much difficult to control. Um, there's no doubt about it. You, you have a site there, you've had four explosions and significant radioactive releases at the site of the reactors. So you're having extremely high levels of radiation in that local area, making it extremely difficult for people to conduct the kind of work that may be useful. You've had three aftershocks over 7.0 on the Richter scale, making it difficult. So in a sense, what you have is you have people trying to repair an automobile damaged, but that's moving at 100 miles an hour without brakes or steering. So the work that might be done that might be effective is getting increasingly problematic to perform.